Good morning. I wanted to talk today about forward growth. This is an important matter to both orthodontists and surgeons, but it really concerns the future of children. Can you make their faces go forward or not? There are many advantages to this, and I will show you a, a patient who um, had problems in this respect. Um, now, he had a overjet, that is the upper front teeth, stuck forward beyond his lower front teeth by Oh, I think 12 millimetres. He was 12 years old and his parents had brought him to see me because they had been told that he could only be treated by surgery. Now, they were naturally concerned about this and had heard that I could often avoid surgery. Um, in Adam's case, um, the orthodontist had said it would be difficult to achieve more than two, possibly three millimetres of growth of his face. Now his upper teeth stuck out some 12 millimetres in front of his lower teeth. That's an unusually large amount. Only about 3% of the population are as severe as that. They had been see an orthodontist who had said they, he thought that they needed surgery. So they went to see a surgical unit and they had confirmed this and said he could not be treated by any other means. They suggested his lower jaw should be cut into three bits and then the middle bit brought forward and then they should be bolted together again so that it would stable. Now, naturally, they wanted to avoid this, which is why they brought him to see me. I said, well, at the age of 12, I think I probably could correct him. Um, and they actually were very relieved and said, well, yes, would you like to um, proceed with that? So I took some x-rays, and as you can see, the upper front teeth tilt a long way forward. Now, many orthodontists will correct this type of problem by extracting a tooth on each side and pulling the front teeth back so that they reduce the projection. However, my measurements had shown that although the front teeth look very far forward, they were actually two or three millimetres too far back. Um, now, orthodontists disagree with me on this point, but the reality is that when you have an overjet of 14 millimetres, you cannot use this technique anyway. Orthodontists feel it could only be done with surgery. Um, however, I decided to treat him with bioblock treatment, which is the method that I use. To start with, we will fit a stage one upper appliance. Here it is illustrated. You can see that there is a screw in the middle and we widen the upper jaw to um, make more room for the teeth. At the same time, we push the lower, uh, sorry, the upper front teeth further forward. You can see two wires there. We push them progressively forward because, as I said earlier, I believe that his teeth were too far back. Now, in the lower jaw, he um, has no widening, but we just push the lower front teeth forward. So the objective of the appliance as a whole is to both widen the jaw and move both sets of teeth further forward. I think you can see the effect after four months. Now, at this point, his teeth are further forward um, and the overjet 
has reduced from about 14 millimeters down to about 10, I would say. But we still need to get his upper and lower teeth meeting better. So uh, here we fit a stage 3 appliance um, and um, this will uh, encourage the lower jaw to grow forward. You can see that there are two projections from the lower part of it. One labelled the anterior lock and the other the posterior lock. These extend down below the brace, as I show you here, and when the child closes their mouth, they prevent the, him from dropping their jaw unless they push it forward. Now, uh, this can be quite uncomfortable if they drop even a millimetre, and painful if they drop even further. They are taught to wear this during the day, initially, and once they can wear it during the day, we ask them to wear it at night as well. Now, this has the effect of making both jaws grow forward. And after a period of about four months, his lower jaw had actually grown quite considerably, as I think you can see in this next picture, um, where that is his upper jaw, and there is his lower jaw. That was at the, the upper picture was at the end of stage one. The lower picture is at the end of stage three. You can see there have been um, a fairly dramatic improvement. However, it's not easy to see whether the upper teeth have gone back or whether the lower teeth have come forward. So we can tell a little more if we look at the photographs. Um, here he is before and here after. You can see visually that his lower jaw has come forward and indeed his face looks better than it did. But um, in order to see what's happened with the jaws, you need to take x-rays. X-rays will show you the actual position of the teeth and bone. Now, in this picture, you can see that his lower jaw has come forward and it looks as though his upper front teeth have uprighted. Did they move back or did they go forward? Again, it's not easy to see. So, in order to disclose that, we trace the outline of the x-ray taken before and afterwards and superimpose them. This is the outline that you get. You can see that indeed the whole of his face has grown forward and that the lower jaw has actually grown forward 16 millimetres. Now, part of that was due to forward movement, but most of it was due to actual growth of the jaws. Now, as I said earlier, orthodontists tell me it's not possible to make jaws grow more than two or three millimetres. Um, however, when using orthotropics, I have frequently uh, managed to achieve as much as 25 millimetres of forward growth of the mandible. Now, the orthodontists have done hundreds of research projects on this, and they have shown, uh, they say, absolutely convincingly that it is not possible to make the jaw grow forward. However, um, here I was saying I could make jaws grow, well, 16 millimetres in this case, and even more in other cases. They actually thought I was cheating. They thought I was taking x-rays with the boy or girl um, holding their lower jaw forward. And so they accused me of deliberate dishonesty. This is a very serious crime or claim. Um, as a result, the General Dental Council remove my license to practice. Normally, only people who commit serious crimes or serious abuse of patients suffer from this condemnation. 
but it does give you an idea of the strength of feeling of orthodontists who say it is quite impossible to move jaws forward. This is regrettable because even in any malocclusion, the jaws are set too far back. That is why there isn't room for the wisdom teeth. Very often, the backwards movement of the mandible causes a condition called temporomandibular joint dysplasia. This is simply that the jaw pushes backwards into the joint and damages it, and these patients have really serious pain and debilitating difficulties. But that is not the end of the story. Many people, when they get older, if their jaws are too far back, it restricts the airway, and so they're likely to have difficulty breathing at night. This it does not usually matter until they reach 60, 70, or maybe 80 years old. But at that age, they can have serious difficulties, and it is said that it reduces the natural lifespan by about 10 years. Now, you can imagine that this causes a lot of dissent, um, both within the orthodontic profession and between the orthodontists, who say you can't make the jaws grow forward, and the orthotropists, who say they can. Now, people have researched orthodontic attitudes, and here I show a case of a boy who um, had his upper teeth sticking out 10 millimeters. And the orthodontists were asked how he should be treated. Every single British orthodontist would send the records and ask how they would treat. 91% said they would pull back the upper teeth and extract teeth on each side. Now this is what was actually done and you can see the effect on the face. His face has actually grown downwards and backwards and a panel of judges was asked to assess his facial appearance and they said that he was 5 Point two um, in the out of ten, that is, beforehand, and four point two, I think, afterwards, showing that aesthetically his face had been quite noticeably damaged. Now this debate will continue forever, I am sure, but I do think the public should be aware that. Um, when orthodontists say it is impossible to gain um, uh, forward growth, that yes, it is impossible for orthodontics to obtain forward growth, more than that is, more two or perhaps three millimeters. But remember, orthodontics claim, and I have just shown, that orthotropics can get substantially more forward growth. So you must consider what you think yourself.